Hi, and welcome back to Coco Sleep, a new podcast of original children's bedtime stories and sleep meditations designed to make bedtime a dream. Please don't forget to press subscribe or follow in your podcast app to make sure you won't ever miss a story or bonus episode. Twice a week on Sundays and Thursdays, a brand new story will be available to help you settle down for the night and easily drift off. Do you like playing hide and seek? (laughs) I thought so. It's also the game our two main characters want to play when they first meet each other. This is a beautiful story of unexpected friendship, which is full of laughter and fun. Snuggle down. And let us travel off now to a faraway land and meet a little snow bear called Snowbell. One day, Snowbell's grandmother tells her a story about a friendly yeti who she met years ago but has never seen since. Snowbell hopes she will be lucky enough to meet a yeti one day. And to her surprise and delight, it's not long before that happens. This is The Yeti and the Snow Bear, by Gillian Rogerson. In a land far, far away, there lived a family of snow bears. They looked very much like polar bears, but there was something magical about them. The snow bears had black noses, just like polar bears. But with a blink of their dark eyes, they could make their noses turn white. And once that happened, the snow bears became invisible. The magical bears loved making themselves invisible, which probably explains why hardly anyone has ever seen them. They weren't the only animals who were hard to find as the youngest snow bear of the family, Snowbell, was about to find out. The snow bear family had been out swimming all afternoon, and when they returned home, they decided to snuggle up together inside their beautiful snow house and tell each other stories. Snowbell loved listening to stories, especially ones told by her grandmother, because she knew all the best ones. Inside the snow house, Snowbell's father made everyone a hot mug of cocoa and then asked who wanted to tell the first story. To Snowbell's delight, her grandmother said she would start the storytelling session. Snowbell wrapped her paws around her hot drink and waited for her grandmother to begin. Snowbell's grandmother gazed dreamily out of the window. She said, It was on a day like this when I met a yeti. I was about your age, Snowbell. The snow was falling in the same fluttering kind of way as it is now, and the wind was brisk and it blew some of the snow into small hills. As you all know, I love going for a long walk through the snow. I can walk for miles and miles some days. On that day, long ago, my family and I were out for a walk. I saw a snow hill ahead of us, and I just had to run up to it. So, up I went. When I got to the top, I sat down and slid down the other side. When I reached the bottom, I saw the yeti. Snowbell had never heard of a yeti before and asked her grandmother what it was. Her grandmother explained that the yeti looked a bit like a human being, but also like an animal who lived in the snow. He had grey fur and was about her size. He looked so friendly that they started to chat. They played in the snow together for a while but then her family called out for her from the other side of the snow hill. She ran halfway up the hill and called back to them to let them know where she was. When she looked back, the yeti had gone. 
he'd left his footprints behind in the snow. But the snow started to fall and quickly covered them up. Snowbell's grandmother smiled softly at the memory. She said, I'll never forget the Yeti and how friendly he was. And I'll never forget what his footprints looked like either. They were like ours, but his toes were longer. I look out for them every time I go for a walk, but I've never found them again. Maybe one day I will. Or maybe you will, Snowbell. The thought of seeing the mysterious Yeti made the little snow bear smile. She very much hoped she would see one. She asked the rest of her family if they'd ever seen a Yeti. No one had, but little Snowbell had a feeling she would see a Yeti one day. That day came sooner than she thought. Two days later, Snowbell was out walking with her family. The snow had fallen thickly earlier and the brisk wind had blown some of the snow into little hills. Her family decided to take a rest from their stroll and to enjoy the picnic they had brought with them. Whilst the food was being unpacked, Snowbell started to explore the nearby area and she saw a snow hill. She ran up it and when she got to the top, she sat on her bottom and slid down the other side. It was great fun. Snowbell was about to slide down the hill again, but then she spotted something peculiar in the snow. Footprints. They were about her size, but the toe prints were longer. Snowbell looked closer and wondered if they'd been made by a yeti. The little bear looked along the snow-covered ground and saw more footprints. She followed them and walked towards an oak tree that had branches heavy with snow. When Snowbell reached the tree, the footprint suddenly stopped. Her little furry face wrinkled up in confusion. A small giggle came from above her. Snowbell looked up at the tree. There was so much snow on it that she couldn't see past the first few branches. Snowbell called out a hello. She waited. No one replied. Perhaps she'd imagined hearing a giggle. She looked behind her at the unusual footprints. They had disappeared. Snowbell shook her head. She said to herself, What is going on here? Footprints don't disappear like that. There was another giggle above her. Snowbell heard it clearly. Someone was playing a fun game with her. She smiled. She knew a fun game too. Very loudly, she said, If there's nothing else to see here, I may as well make myself vanish. She turned her black nose white and immediately became invisible. There was a movement in the tree above and bits of snow fluttered down from the branches as if someone was moving along them. Snowbell stayed as still as she could. She heard a soft thud as someone landed next to her. A voice muttered, Where did that polar bear go? She was just here. Polar bears don't disappear like that. Snowbell tried hard not to giggle, but she couldn't help herself, and a little chuckle came from her. She made her nose turn back to black and became visible again. She said softly, Boo, I'm right here. 
In front of her stood a young creature who looked like a human being, but also like an animal. He had pale grey fur and light brown eyes. He had such a kind face that Snowbell knew immediately that she liked him. She asked, Are you a yeti? He nodded and said, How did you make yourself disappear like that? I didn't know polar bears could do that. Snowbell told him she wasn't a polar bear. She was a snow bear. The little yeti shook his head and said there were no such thing as snow bears. His grandad had told him once that he'd met a snow bear when he was young, but no one else had seen the bear, and some yetis thought his grandad had made up the story. The yeti said, My grandad loves making up stories. Sometimes they're real and sometimes they're not. I wanted to believe his story about the snow bear, but because no one else had ever seen one, I didn't think they were real. He smiled at Snowbell and said, I'm glad you are real. My name is Littlefoot. What's yours? Snowbell told him. She said her grandmother had met a yeti when she was young, and perhaps she had met Littlefoot's grandad. Maybe they did meet each other, Littlefoot said with a smile. Snowbell pointed to the snow and asked why his footprints had disappeared. Littlefoot shrugged and said it was just something his footprints did. It happened with all yetis. He asked how she'd made herself invisible, and Snowbell shrugged and said it was just something snow bears did. Littlefoot asked her to do it again, so Snowbell did so. Then she asked him to make his footprints disappear again. Littlefoot raced around the oak tree ten times as fast as he could. He left behind dozens of footprints. Snowbell watched in amazement as each yeti footprint completely vanished and the snow was smooth again. Littlefoot grinned and said they should play a game together and he knew the perfect one. Snowbell said she did too. At the same time, they both said, Hide and seek! They agreed Snowbell should hide first. Littlefoot turned his face to the tree, closed his eyes and began to count. Snowbell moved over to the snow hill, changed the colour of her nose and made herself invisible. When Littlefoot had counted to ten, she saw him walking through the snow and muttering to himself, wondering where she'd gone. She tried very, very hard not to giggle, but she couldn't help herself. Littlefoot heard her giggle and ran over to her. She became visible again and smiled at him. He said, found you. You're very good at hiding. My turn now. Snowbell turned around, closed her eyes and counted to ten. When she turned back around, she saw Littlefoot's prints in the snow. He would be easy to find, she thought. But before she could follow his prints, they started to vanish. In seconds, they were all gone. Snowbell began to search for him. She hadn't been looking for long before she heard Littlefoot's giggle. It was a funny giggle, and it made her laugh too. She followed the noise and found the little yeti hiding behind a fallen log. 
Snowball said, Found you. I don't think we should play this again because we keep laughing. You've got a funny laugh. Littlefoot chuckled and said Snowbell had a funny laugh too. They began to laugh more and more, and hearing the other one laugh made them giggle and chuckle over and over again. They held onto their tummies as they laughed. Littlefoot laughed so much that he fell over and landed softly on his back in the thick snow. He kicked his little legs happily in the air. Seeing him like that made Snowbell giggle more, until she fell over too. The snow bear and the yeti kicked their legs joyfully in the air, and laughed and laughed. When all their laughter had come out, for the time being at least, Snowbell asked Littlefoot if he knew any other games. Littlefoot asked if she'd ever made rainbow snowballs before. She hadn't, and asked her new friend how to make them. The young yeti got up. He held his hand out to Snowbell and helped her to her feet. He said, We have to find the rainbow snow first. When snow falls during a full moon, the moonbeams magically turn it into different colours. But when the sun shines on the snow in the morning, the snow turns back into its normal colour. Snowbell said, Oh, I didn't know that. Can you only find the magic snow at night time, then? The yeti whispered. Sometimes the rainbow snow gets covered up with the other snow before the sun reaches it. If you're quick enough and know where to look, you'll find it. I know where to find some. Would you like to see it? Snowbell Didn't know why Littlefoot was whispering, but she felt like she should too. In a low whisper, she said, I would love to see the rainbow snow. Littlefoot told Snowbell to follow him. As they walked along, Snowbell stepped in the Yeti's footprints. Their feet were the same size but their toes were different. Snowbell pointed the double prints out to her new friend, and they stopped for a moment to look at them. The Yeti's prints disappeared, leaving only Snowbells behind. Littlefoot smiled at the snow bear and said, My prints will always be there with yours, even if we can't see them. Snowbell smiled and said that was a lovely thought. They reached a large rock. Littlefoot knelt next to it and began to scoop some of the top snow away. Snowbell knelt next to him and did the same. As they scooped the snow away, the little bear started to sing a song her grandmother had taught her. The yeti looked at her in surprise and said he knew that song too. His granddad had taught him it. They decided their grandparents must have met all those years ago and imagined them singing together as they played in the snow. Littlefoot and Snowbell sang together happily and continued clearing the snow away. Snowbell was having such a good time that she quite forgot what they were looking for, until Littlefoot started to whisper again. Snowbell, look, there it is. 
Snowbell gazed down in wonder at the rainbow snow beneath her paws. A wide line of snow was coloured in bright shades of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet. Snowbell said it looked like a rainbow had drifted from the sky and was having a peaceful sleep in the snow. Littlefoot said he'd never thought about the rainbow snow that way before, but agreed with Snowbell that it did look like a sleeping rainbow. Snowbell gently put her paw into the multicoloured snow. She giggled and said, If this is, is it supposed to do that? Littlefoot nodded. He said, You should see what else it does. Let's make some rainbow snowballs together, and I'll show you what to do with them. The friends made as many snowballs as they could carry. The little yeti covered the special snow back up, in case they needed some more later. Littlefoot walked away from the rock and asked Snowbell not to move. He said he was going to throw a rainbow snowball at her tummy, but she wasn't to worry because it wouldn't hurt at all, and something magical would happen when the snowball landed on her. Snowbell nodded, put her snowballs down, and said she was ready. Littlefoot threw his first rainbow snowball. It arced gracefully through the air, before flying towards Snowbell. The snow landed gently on her tummy and began to pop like bubbles in a bath. Pop! 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 With a giggle, the snow bear said, It tickles! Throw another one! Littlefoot did and every time a magical snowball landed on Snowbell, she chuckled and chortled, because it tickled so much. When Littlefoot had thrown his last snowball, the little snow bear said she would throw one at him. Snowbell threw her first one. It soared towards Littlefoot and knocked him over. He fell backwards onto the soft snow and started to laugh. Snowbell ran over to him and said sorry. She didn't know she was so strong. The Yeti said there was no need to apologise because it didn't hurt at all and it was fun to fall onto the snow. He told her to throw more at him and see if she could knock him over again. Snowbell did knock him over again and again, and every time he fell down, Littlefoot would laugh loudly, because the popping snow would pop and tickle his tummy. Hearing him laugh made Snowbell giggle too. The little snow bear soon ran out of rainbow snowballs, so she returned to the big rock with her friend, gathered more snow and made plenty more. Littlefoot said they could do more amazing things with the magical snow. He stood away from the bear and told her to watch him. He collected a handful of snowballs, and began to juggle them. As he did so, tiny rainbow-coloured snowflakes drifted from the snow and floated upwards. When they got higher, the snowflakes joined together and made a huge floating rainbow. 
rays of sunlight shone down through the rainbow and made it glimmer and shimmer. The colours slowly faded from it, and the snowy rainbow turned silver before completely disappearing. Littlefoot told Snowbell to do some juggling too. She said she'd never done it before and wasn't sure she'd be any good. Of course you will, Littlefoot said. I wasn't very good when I first started, but I kept practising until I could do it. Watch what I do again, and copy me. Snowbell watched the Yeti carefully. When she thought she was ready, she began to juggle the snowballs. She dropped a few at first, but she soon got better, and before long, Tiny rain-coloured snowflakes drifted upwards from the snow and made a snow rainbow in the sky. Littlefoot told Snowbell she was an excellent juggler and she replied he was an excellent teacher. The Yeti had something else to show Snowbell. He took her over to the oak tree and showed her how to throw the special snowballs onto the branches so that they would stay there and not fall off. Again, she copied his movements exactly. The snow bear and the yeti concentrated on throwing the snowballs up onto the tree where they rested lightly on the branches. When all the snowballs had been thrown, Littlefoot took Snowbell by the paw and asked her to stand beneath the tree with him. The two friends stood under the tree. Littlefoot looked up through the branches as if waiting for something to happen. Snowbell looked up too even though she didn't know what they were waiting for. A few seconds later, something magical happened. Rainbow-coloured snowflakes began to fall from the tree, and not just from the branches where the snowballs had landed, but from every branch on the tree. Down and down, The flakes fluttered silently. They fell from every twig and branch and surrounded the tree like a rainbow waterfall. Snowbell looked at the falling flakes in complete wonder. Each snowflake was different to the one next to it. The bright colours sparkled in the light of the sun. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Snowbell turned slowly around and watched the flakes falling like a sparkling curtain of colours. She said to Littlefoot, I feel like I'm inside a magical rainbow. It's beautiful. Thank you for showing me this. Littlefoot smiled and said she was very welcome. They watched the falling snow in silence. As the flakes landed on the ground, they sparkled brightly and then turned into white snowflakes. The last of the rainbow snow fell. Snowbell yawned and said watching all those beautiful snowflakes had made her tired. She said, I might have to go back to my snow house soon and get into my bed. Littlefoot gave her a puzzled look 
and asked what a snow house was. It's where I live, Snowbell explained. Don't you live in houses? Littlefoot shook his head and said he lived in a cave at the top of the mountains. All the yetis lived in caves. He asked more about her snow house and what it looked like. Snowbell said, Would you like to make one with me? We can make a small one, and it won't take long. Littlefoot said he would love that, and together the snow bear and the yeti built a cosy snow house, complete with two windows and an open doorway. They snuggled down inside it and smiled at each other. Snowbell said, I'm glad we met. Me too, Littlefoot replied. The two new friends smiled again and then closed their tired eyes. The youngsters fell asleep. A minute later, another snow bear slid down the same hill that Snowbell had gone down earlier. It was Snowbell's grandmother. She was looking for her granddaughter. When she saw Snowbell and her new friend fast asleep in the little snow house, her heart filled with love. She was glad Snowbell had met a yeti. She gazed at them with love. Someone moved over to her and looked at the sleeping infants too. It was Littlefoot's grandfather. He smiled at Snowbell's grandmother and said it was wonderful to meet her again after all these years. The rest of Snowbell's family slid down the hill and the other members of Littlefoot's family walked out from behind the trees. Once they'd made sure the little ones were sleeping soundly, they introduced themselves to each other and began chatting about many things. The Yetis told the snow bears about the magical rainbow snow and showed them what it did. The snow bears talked about their snow homes and then helped the yetis to make some. The families chatted happily with each other and whilst they had their differences, they had lots in common too, especially how much they loved their children. The sky grew darker and stars appeared. The families talked a bit more quietly and said now that they'd met each other, they would make sure they would meet again very soon. They placed some markers on trees and rocks so that they would know where to find each other in the future. The full moon appeared and dancing sheets of green blue and purple, weaved back and forth across the dark sky. The two families sat down in the snow together and watched the magical dancing lights. One by one, they began to yawn. They decided a night under the stars with their new friends would be quite wonderful. The snow bears and the yetis lay down on the snow, said good night to each other, and fell into a peaceful slumber. Nearby, Snowbell and her new friend, Littlefoot, was still fast asleep. 
The little snow bear dreamed about her new friend with the kind face. Littlefoot dreamed about the smiling snow bear who could make herself invisible. The two friends sighed happily and drifted into a deeper sleep. <laughs>